She's mum to hundreds of animals that she affectionately calls her babies. At the moment we have about 300 animals. There's um, all different enclosures and uh, there's kangaroos and possums and koalas, wombats, um, all sorts of birds of prey and parrots and uh, then the hospital facility itself. Looking after this interesting mix is the name of the game here at this sanctuary. We rescue, rehabilitate and release injured and orphan wildlife. It must be very rewarding. What inspired you to get involved in something like this? I've always loved animals, but I got very ill about 20 odd years ago. And um, I, as a therapy for me to get better, I joined a uh, rescue group. <laughs> and they taught me how to raise possums and kangaroos. And then I joined the Bird Society and they taught me how to look after baby birds. Well, obviously the farm here has grown a lot since you first started. How do you take care of all the animals? I don't do it on my own. You could, couldn't look after 300 animals on your own. So we have volunteers and work experience students. They help out to feed things and maintain the place. So can anybody help out? Absolutely. You'd be more than welcome. Actually, I've got some jobs for you if you like. Awesome, let's do it. Let's go. <laughs> Meet my first job, Jimmy. A three-month-old Roo Joey who's very hungry. And he's absolutely adorable. Jimmy here is the most precious little thing. How did he end up here with you? Well, he came from Western Australia, oddly enough. Someone uh, hit his mother with the car and um, then somebody found the baby. And uh, they brought it over to South Australia and um, someone was raising him and couldn't manage him and um, asked if we'd take him on. So. Aww. Yeah. How do you take care of someone like Jimmy? It's pretty easy, actually. He's... Um, because of his age, he's quite capable of getting in and out of his own pouch. So he has a little bedroom with a wall heater and he gets in and out of his pouch and gets up and tucks into a bit of chaff and hay and pellets. It's spoiled. And just has a bottle twice a day. Yeah, he looks like he's absolutely loving it. Yeah, he does. <laughs> Once Jimmy has been fed and given his fair share of cuddles, we're off to the hospital. This is the, where we first begin with them when they're in shock. So the way to get them out of shock is to warm them up. Warm, dark and quiet. So this is where we stabilise the animal, get them on their medications and start them on their road to recovery. And who do we have here? This is Barney, a barn owl, and he was hit by a car, so he suffered some concussion. That's no good. Mm -hmm. He looks pretty healthy now, though. He's great. He's actually eating beautifully, and he's ready for the next stage, which is going outside of the warmer environment and getting him flying, and then we can get him home. Great. Well, let's go, Barney. Let's go. This is exactly why we put them in a flight cage like this, because their muscle tone just drops within three days in a small cage. So you need to get them in a big flight cage so they can go back and forwards and build that muscle tone up, and then they're good to let go. What an amazing sight. You go, Barney. Now, this job certainly has a few perks, but you've also got to be up to get down and a bit dirty. Yep, a big part of the day at this farm is spent doing some not-so-glamorous things. But when you get to hang out with fellas like this, it makes it all totally worth it. Huey, you are so cute. 